Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Chew Tuesday. We're coming at you with some 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Jumbo Edition. Eight box, pick your team number 13. All card chip and big thanks to this group for making it happen. You had another jumbo Appreciate you. I sure did. Where are they? Oh, they're, they're, they're right there, right, right in the baseball section. Really? Yeah. There's two cases left. One I posted and one is unclaimed. Who knows who's going to get that. David with Last Bought Mojo with the Dodgers. There's everybody else. And let's pop this case open. Was it an exciting trade window? Or trade deadline? What does everyone think? Dodgers were linked to a lot of players. They, they're linked with Justin Verlander for a second. He ended up going back to Houston. They were linked with Michael Lorenzen, who went to uh, the Phillies. The Dodgers were linked to Eduardo Rodriguez, who has some no trade features in his contract. And I guess he enjoys staying in the Detroit area. Said no. Uh, Jack Flaherty went to the Orioles. I think, uh, was there some talk about maybe Dylan Cease? I don't think Dylan Cease went anywhere, right? So the Dodgers got a uh, Got lefty, a lefty arm, Yarbrough from the uh, former Ray, current Royal. We got Yarbrough, who is probably most likely gonna. I think he was used as an opener, somewhat frequently in his Rays days, if I remember correctly. Not sure what the Dodgers' plans are for him, but. Kind of a quiet trade window for the Dodgers, trade deadline for the Dodgers. I think Dodgers fans, especially myself, expect a little bit more than that. But we'll see how it, we'll see how it works out for my boys in blue. Their offense has been playing really well. Starting pitching is a little bit of a concern, but maybe they're not as concerned as, as we thought. There's Michael Toglia, rookie auto for the Rockies. The camera, we're gonna have to switch cameras again, I think. This camera is having a hard time focusing here. Let me try to adjust this really quick. Go manual focus. And I want that focus to be set at a certain distance. Right here is probably good, right? Right around there. Looks good enough. Looks a little, I feel like it looks a little too bright as well. Sorry, we have a new camera. It's a little bit, a little bit better, I guess. I want to, I want to dial in that. Move down the brightness a little bit here. We'll see. We'll have, to, we'll have to live with it for now. I think it's good enough for now. All right. So rocks. That's going to be for Tim and the Rockies. Ryan Boone saying the Rick Guardians got rid of Josh Bell. Thank God. Can't believe someone wanted him. Too bad they couldn't get rid of Miles Straw as well. <clears throat> There's Ezekiel Tovar, 25. 
Orange Wave for the Rockies. Another rock for Tim. Royals got more for the Dodger Padre than when they traded Chapman. Yeah, so who were the prospects that the that, that went your to the Royals? Gilo. I think when I saw the news, I didn't see who was who ended up being moved. There's a base Corbin Carroll for Tyler. And our next autograph is Alec Burleson. 469 out of 499. Cardinals making a lot of changes, trading away a lot of pitching. That's going to be for Sam Rail, St. Louis. Got a Alexis Diaz, 254 out of 399 for the Red Legs. That'll be for Michael S. And our third and final autograph of our first box is Nolan Jones. Oh, nice. Thank you. I was going to move that at some point today. There's a Rockies. That's going to be another rock for Tim. I'm going to keep it there. I'll find a room for it. Once all the offices are moved around, we'll find a good home. Got to update my board. All right. We'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break. Next box, Devin Mann and Derlin Figueroa. I've never heard of those guys. I'm not sure if they're on the... They might be in the top... Are they, I don't think they're in the top 30 prospects for the Dodgers. No, Devin Mann's actually number 20. Nine, an infielder. Yeah, Durland's not on this list, though. So I guess Devin Mann was probably the, the centerpiece of that small little deal. Many scouts regard Mann as more of a good college player than a quality prospect while he was at Louisville, but the Dodgers like to unlock some more upside. Drafted him in the fifth round. He has increased his power, defensive ability as a pro. A little bit on the older side, enjoying his best season. He has a 26-year-old in AAA in 2023. He doesn't have a huge ceiling, but could fill a utility role at the big league level. All right, that's not bad. For Ryan Yarbrough, the, you know, you got to fill out the, uh, what, a 25, 26-man roster. It always needs players like that. All right. Next box. We got Will Benson, 77 out of 299. That's going to go to Ryan and his guardians. Aaron Saval got moved somewhere. And the Guardians kind of retooling, trading, retooling a little bit. Uh, 
Rex is saying too, I'm not like I'm not sure how I like having to go back and forth, although I'm seeing now you know, the both fanatics have and and what, YouTube one at the same time on your phone? There you go. I mean if you want to watch Instagram, you'd have to do the same thing. It's not any different. Flipping between YouTube and Instagram. Not sure what the complaint is. Photo negative Brian Reynolds, Pirates, Mark. And we got David Villar, rookie auto for the Giants. That's going to go to Tyler. And there's a Natalie Rushman, rookie refractor. Nice. That's the sort of stuff we want to see. Aaron and the O's. Orioles picking up Jack Flaherty. That was a nice move. Ah, that's true. I guess you don't really do personals as often. Well, I suppose we'll just have to learn, Rex. We'll have to be nimble. We'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. Maybe, uh, maybe two devices. You can, have a, you can have an iPad. You can have a phone for one stream, an iPad for the other stream. And there's Shay Langliers, A's, rookie auto for Eric M. And it's strange how many players, uh, that's, you know what, that is true. I kind of noticed that too. A lot of, just a lot more players than, than usual seem to be going back to teams they used to play for at one point or another. Matt Libertor to 199. I don't know why I top voted that, but but there it is. All right, box two in the books. Next box, next jumbo box. Forgot to put this in the schedule, but I don't think there's anything sold out after this, but this break will take about an hour. We're already we're about 13 minutes in. So with the moves that were made, who, I guess, who won the trading deadline? A lot of people talk about who wins the off season, but I don't know if that's usually indicative of how, especially in baseball, how a team's going to look the following year. Look what the Mets and Padres did now. Now look at them. Although the Padres don't look now, but the Padres in the last month have been playing some great baseball. So maybe I think they were buyers. I think they added added some players. I think they're looking. I think they're looking to make a run. In the AL, the Orioles made some moves. They're leading the division. So is Texas. So is Minnesota. Toronto made some moves. They're third in the wild card. Yeah, Houston picked up Verlander. Houston picked up Verlander, and they're second in the wild card, and the Rays are first in the wild card race. They're five games ahead. I think they're going to be fine. But Houston and Toronto making some moves. Red Sox not making moves. Yeah, the Angels are only three back of a wild card spot. And they picked up Giolito, among others. They need some help on that front part of that rotation. You know, give the team a little confidence. As well, sometimes that alone helps if your team's a buying team. They added some hitters too, which made some, made an impact the other night already. Here is Tyler Freeman for Ryan and the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. Another Guardian for Ryan. 
So yeah, Angels making moves, so that's good for them. Yankees not really making moves. They're three and a half back of the wild card. And Albert Pujols to 125. Seattle is three and a half back. They're within striking distance, but I don't know if they really made too many buys. Ooh, look at that. An ultraviolet Adley Rushman. Nice one for Aaron and the O's. It's a case hit. Yeah, the Angels needed that starting help, and that's for sure. They can't just rely on Otani. Although Patrick Sandoval is having a decent season. But yeah, they, they could use another guy towards the front of that rotation. And then we got a rookie auto, Joey Manessis. 196 out of 499, rookie auto for Patrick Davis and the Nationals. see up in this. Got a nice rookie silver here in Michael Harris. That's going to go to Matt and the Braves. So let's see how the trades shake out in the AL. What about the NL? Do we have any difference makers in the NL? trade windows. So the Braves are already leading the East, Dodgers leading the West, Cincinnati's leading the Central. Did Cincinnati make any additions? Anyone remember? Mark Vientos, 299. I thought they'd be a lot more aggressive, but maybe they like what they have. Dodgers made some moves. We're going to see Lance Lynn tonight. That was the Dodgers pickup. Hopefully he can, he can eat up some innings as the rest of the Dodge starters get, get healthier and hopefully work through some a little bit of a slump. 48 out of 150, Logan Ohapi for the Halos. That's going to go to Kenny. I think San Francisco made some moves. They're leading the wild card. Philadelphia made some moves. They added Michael Lorenzen, I believe. which kind of shored up their pitching staff. I think Trey Turner's been slumping a little bit. He needs to, if he wakes up and everything starts clicking, that'll be good. Ah, Ryan's thinking the, a, the Reds picked up a reliever for the A's. Um, <clears throat> I think Arizona made some additions. Miami made some additions. I think Brewers added a reliever. Cubs are three and a half games out. They made some. They made some moves here. Made a couple little moves to help them out. The Padres even made some moves. They're five games back of a wild card spot. I think they're. I think they're trying to go for it. That's gonna be a tight race between the Diamondbacks, Miami, and Milwaukee. They're all tied. For well, actually, it's super. I mean, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Arizona, Miami, Milwaukee. They're all within a game of each other. And the, then the Cubs are currently on the outside looking in at three and a half games back. And the Padres are five games back. Those are the teams that seem to be pushing for a wild card spot. That, that, that list, that whole entire list could be completely different within a couple weeks. Mets are six games back, but it looks like they're putting up the white flag for the season. So dumb question, Rex is saying, no one can do any trading for the rest of the season, correct. However, they can sign people. Yes. So players that are released can be signed, I guess, at any time. There's Connor Capel. Yeah, it does, Ryan. If anything, 
it, it, it creates more more aggressive buyers in the market, right? That extra wild card spot, having three total. A's, that's for Eric M. So it kind of prevents, there's a nice Jordan Walker, rookie refractor, prevents straight up fire sales for most teams, keeps most teams in it, makes more player, more teams, makes more of them buyers. And there's Estuary Ruiz, this is the speedster out of 299. And if you are trading, you probably get a decent return because there's not as many sellers and a lot of buyers. So it's teams that do have to sell might get some better, might get a better return. It's 14 out of 250, Brandon Hughes, purple chrome autograph. So maybe that maybe it works for everybody. For the Cubbies, that's going to go to Stephen Carney. There's a Josh Young. Rookie Refractor, that's gonna to go to Tristan in Texas. Yeah, that one game wild card was a little awkward. Now we've got now we've got a, a short little series and that makes a little more sense in terms of baseball. That's a, might, might not be a bad, we'll keep seeing how it plays out as the years go on, but not a bad move by Major League Baseball, I think. We got a Jeremy Pena flipped around here. Is that maybe? A short print? No, maybe not. I don't think so. I think the end of the card should be 181. Base is 121. This is 121. Yep, yeah, a little, little, uh, nice little eight game. Were they on an eight game winning streak? The Cubs. Yeah, that's that's enough to change a team's mind. I think that's what happened with the uh, with the Angels as well. They had a nice little week, and that kind of changed their mind. They're like, "Well, f it, let's go for it." Here's Anderson Espinosa, rookie auto for the Padres. That'll be for Brooks and the Friars. DL Hall to 399. I mean, I, I, I it'd be hard to believe that, like the D, the DFA market is not going to be great. I doubt the Cubs are going to get anybody in the DFA market the next few weeks. Because, like, who, who are they going to take off the roster for that player? I mean, I guess maybe they'll pick him up for, for a minor league role, but... I mean, Nelson Cruz got dfa Is he going to get picked up by the Cubs and drop a player from their current 25, 26-man roster? Maybe if there's an injury, maybe, but... Yeah, I thought the, I don't know, we'll see how the dust settles on what happened with Dylan Cease, but I thought Dylan Cease was a good candidate for the Dodgers. I thought they would make a real big push for him. But maybe the asking price was, was too high. Yeah, so let me see. According to MLBTradeRumors.com, Red Sox acquire Luis Urias. Uh, this is what Ryan was talking about earlier. Josh Bell went to the Marlins. And Guardians got some guys back. Got Khalil Watson, Will... Khalil Watson, and will release Gene Segura. Khalil Watson, is, I feel like, was, was at one point a, a higher touted prospect for the fish. My Dodgers got Ryan Yarbrough. To kind of bolster the pitching staff. Padres acquire Scott Barlow. Blue Jays got Paul DeYoung. 
But I don't think... Yeah, he was a first round pick, right? So, I don't know why they were moving him for Josh Bell, but maybe maybe there was no space for him. Maybe Watson hadn't progressed as, as, uh, as quickly as they wanted him to. Oh, Tommy Pham to the Diamondbacks. That was a good move, too. Oh, Padres also got Rich Hill and G-Man Choi from the Pirates. Rich Hill's been having a decent season. He's a, he's a great... Great pitcher for the back of that rotation, so Padres are really going for it. So let's see how all these trades shake out. It'll be very interesting to see. Got something for the Twins. Louis Varlin. Rookie auto for the Twins. That'll be for Dylan. Ah, he hasn't been hitting that well on A-ball. Well, if the Guardians minor league system can unlock something, if their coaches can unlock something in them, that'll be a great deal. Here's Clayton Kershaw, photo negative. He'll be coming off the IL soon. Dodgers are just rolling with it. They're like, hey, we don't, we don't need to add too much. We like what we got, apparently. Or perhaps the price was just too high. A lot of teams knowing how rich that Dodgers farm system is. Oh yeah, I know about the auction thing, Rex. We've been working pretty closely with Fanatics over this past year on all sorts of fun features. 60 out of 299, Spencer Steer. Purple Speckle. Got him on my fantasy team early on this season. Picked him up off the waivers. He's been playing great. I feel like if there were a few other rookies that didn't exist in the NL, you know, he might have a good shot at. That's some, uh, some Rookie of the Year votes. And yeah, that auction feature on Fanatics Live, I think is gonna be one of those things where, um, you know, that'll, that'll, in lieu of say, let's say we're trying to move a team or something like that, or a few teams, maybe in, in lieu of a filler, we can use that auction function. And just move teams that way. Makes it a little more interactive and fun. And that app allows that kind of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun with that app, especially... It's still, it's still in beta. We, were, we, we had a nice meeting with Fanatics at the National on Friday. We spent some time with them. And, uh, and some of the big wigs. Some C-suite guys. Here's Nelson Velasquez. Was this the player? Was Nelson Velasquez moved? Yeah, he's on the Royals now. So Stephen Carney with the Cubs, still Cubs edition in this set, but that's what he's about. You have bigger post-its here? Yeesh, maybe? Maybe. Oh, let me check the back. Yeah, checking the back cabinet or Marin might have some. <clears throat> All right, three boxes to go. But yeah, I've talked to a lot of the Fanatics folks, a couple of the C-suite guys, some of the Fanatics events guys. Um, so they've got a lot of, uh, they got a lot of big ideas in the pipeline. Now, for now, I think the, re the reminder to everybody is that the Fanatic 5 app is still in a uh, in beta form. They do, I they do have to make some adjustments on the on the back end of things in terms of shipping. 
So there may be, unless they fix that already, they've been fixing a lot of these pretty quickly, but, um, but I think shipping wise, it takes a little extra time. So give them a little patience there, but. But yeah, that should be a pretty, should be a pretty fun app. A lot easier for us to use on that end as well. They're not, Adam. They're working on it as we speak. It's Gabriel Moreno, 230i250. It is, it is a, an issue, it's a known issue. It was, that was the plan anyway. They want to start with iOS, but they're, they've also concurrently have Android in the works. That should be out in a month or two. But they're not ignoring Android. I mean, how many, how many you know, how many people in the world use use Android? I think from a from a, if you're not familiar with develop development, developing, a lot of developers will will build on the iOS platform first. I think there's just a lot more challenges to making it work for iOS, and a lot more a lot more challenges to get that into the iOS App Store. A lot of regulations there. So that's why most apps, I think even back in the day when like Instagram, Twitter, Uber, Lyft, stuff like that, when a lot of those beta apps were released, they were all for iOS. So once you can clear that Apple Store platform and the complexities of iOS, then it's a lot easier to build right on top of Android and then push that out. 47 out of 299, Bryce Johnson. Yeah, we saw some base Corbin Carrolls, but nothing numbered, no color, no autograph just yet, Tyler Z, but thankfully. We still have one more autograph in this stack and two more boxes to go. We got Michael Conforto, gold wave to 12, 12 out of 50. More people also use iPhones? I thought Android was probably, isn't that the most used platform though? Between, between Galaxy and LG and Google Pixel and, and here's a James Alman autograph. Nice rookie auto for David and the Dodgers. Last spot mode, nobody wanted him. Everyone just stared at the Dodgers. Didn't want to take him. James Alman hitting a lot better in the last month or so. Might, might want to get the power numbers up just a tad, but he's playing well. All right, two more boxes go, six autos to go. Yeah, that's what I thought. Android has 70% market share. But they'll get, it's not like Fanatics was like, oh, I forgot about it. Android, no, they did not. This, this, this was planned from the get-go.
They're also developing a uh, desktop version as well. I don't know which is going to come out first, but, but they're working on it. And here's Christopher Morel, 113 out of 150. Yeah, we had a nice little meeting with that whole Fanatics Live team. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to see from the viewer perspective, but they've got a big team. They've got a really smart team there. There's Ramon Laureano to 199. A's, that will be for Eric. But they, they've, uh, you know, Fanatics, either poached or recruited a lot of uh, a lot of smart programmers from around the industry you know so it's not like they just they just hired a bunch of interns and was like hey you know Here, this is out a I think this is a uh, variation yeah this is a short print Josh Young you can already, already tell it's, it looks a little different so you can see there's a, that tiny little serial number ends with 173 instead of the usual 121, which is the base. 181 is a super short print. This is just a short print here. Very nice. Rangers. It's going to go to Tristan, who got Texas straight up. And we got Simeon Woods Richardson, twins. That will be for Dylan in Minnesota. Seeing a number of those base Corbin Carols, we gotta find some some actual Corbin Carols, some some parallels, some autos. 72 out of 350, Dansby Swanson for the Cubs, Steven. Ah, Gilo saying that iPhone has more US market share. Adam did admit, though, that he was not doing super in-depth research. He just did a quick, quick Google search. And behind Bregman is Brett Beatty. Refractor autograph for the Mets. It's going to be for Mark. Actually, David, you're right. Um, yeah, that should be that. I, I should have been, well, all cards should. You'll get them. Take care of those Otanis and those Acuna Juniors because Topps is bringing back that, um, whatchamacallit, is that, uh, that MVP buyback program? Do you remember that? You bring, from Topps Chrome, you bring an Otani um, or Ronald Acuna base card back to your local participating hobby shop and I think you get like some sort of I think we give you some sort of credit in return I think we saw a few Otanis in here but but yeah I think on a certain day next year There'll be a day where or a week or so where you can bring in your base and you can um, you can get some nice credit from your local hobby shop. 
and that goes back to tops, and then they do something with it. I don't know. They, they must have something special planned. Yeah, Otani base going for like a hundred bucks even now. I think by the time that promo happens, it might not be that high, but. But yeah, Motani seems like a lock. Oh, 10 bucks, sorry, I, I, I read 100 bucks. Still, I think the credit was, was more than that. Is, is Evan around? Yeah, we were looking at um, at who the favorites were for for those awards yesterday, and um, yeah, Otani was a super heavy favorite. And no one was really even close. And then here's Otani right here. And um, Acuna Jr. on the NL side was also not as not as a, not as heavy of a favorite as Otani, but he was a favorite. Usually, a lot of times they're not as they're not that heavy of favorites. This, even at this stage of the season, you'll still they're all usually at underdog prices. You got Bo Naylor, 19 out of 2.99. Cleveland, this is for you. Ryan with the Guardians. We got a George Springer photo negative for the Blue Jays. Dominic with the Bluebirds. And nice, Christian Yelich relic. These generally fall one per case, one every other case, something like that. And that will be for Brian K and the Brew Crew. There's Mike Trout. And the second half of the final box. Good luck, my friends. We've got another case in the store. We can run it back at some point tonight. And Sean Bouchard, 15 out of 199. Aqua Shimmer is our final autograph of the rig, unless there's a bonus one in there. That'll be for the Rockies, Tim Leahy. Or no, we should have one more, sorry. There was two autographs and that one was just the relic. So we still have a third and final autograph out of this box. Who could it be now? Francisco Alvarez, rookie refractor for the Mets. We got a Riley Green, green. 5 out of 99, green wave for Detroit. That'll be for David O. We've got a Gunnar Henderson, rookie refractor. And behind Riley Green is a Caleb Killian autograph. Chicago Cubs, rookie auto for Stephen Carney. The Gunnar Henderson refractor will go to Aaron and the O's. Let's see if there's any other parallels to close things out. No, we've got a, got a Gunnar Henderson insert, Mackenzie Gore, and a DJ LeMayhew refractor. There you go, boys and girls. Hey, Evan. 
Um, when we did that uh, MVP buyback thing, what was the credit? It was 20 bucks for a base, 40 for a refractor, 100 for numbered over wow. 100, and then 200 for anything 99. Or less. Store credit. To Store credit. credit. Yes. Participating locations only. So, uh, whoever has the Angels in this break, which will be Kenny, and whoever has the Braves, Matt, you know, you're more more likely to hold on to that base and see if you have a participating store location that'll that'll do that for you or I guess maybe put it on a secondary market I'm sure there'll be someone who has a participating store that's a sh that's a short print right here has a participating store that'll will be happy to buy it here's the recap nice little break some nice colors some nice autographs you know we got the Adley Rushman ultraviolet the Josh Young short print some nice color, Adley Rushman Refractors, Logan Ohio, that's one to hold on to. Nice break, ladies and gentlemen. More in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe, I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.